Okay, so this was the week where uh, Hamas agreed to a 40-day ceasefire uh, in exchange for the release of 33 hostages and a number, I think like 18 Palestinian prisoner, maybe even, I, I forgot what they swap. It doesn't matter because it's fucking not happening. Mm. <laughs> um, uh, Do they not want, does somebody not want the ceasefire to happen? I feel like we're all against killing maybe. children. Is mm. that I don't know, I feel like maybe there's some sort of force stopping that from happening. There's know. not like a broader goal here, right? Mm -mm -mm. This just started on October 7th. Yeah, I don't know what, I don't, they're just... Because I feel like it's a misunderstanding if it is going skirmish, on it's a, it's um, a skirmish overseas. <laughs> so anyway, this was a ceasefire brokered by Qatar and Egypt. Israel said, no, no, not yet. Like, like maybe, but we got to do a thing. BRB going to go do a thing. So uh, here's what they tweeted. The This was yesterday morning. Um, while the Hamas proposal is far from meeting Israel's core demands, Israel will dispatch a ranking delegation to Egypt in an effort to maximize the possibility of reaching an agreement on terms acceptable to Egypt or to Israel. Excuse me. Uh, follow up. Um, the war cabinet unanimously decided this evening Israel will continue its operation in Rafah in order to apply military pressure on Hamas so as to advance the release of our hostages and achieve the other objectives of the war. They just agreed to a ceasefire. Mm -hmm. That tweet was like, I think it might have even been a thread. It was right <coughs> after this one. It was like, we'll think about it, but we're still going to do the Rafah invasion. And I think it's so funny that they had to add why. Like to bring them to the table so that they'll release the hostages. And nothing is more emblematic of this entire like misnomer of war um, than this exact action, which is you're offering a ceasefire, but actually we're trying to ethnically cleanse and we're going to keep on bombing Rafa. Um, they're warning civilians in, I guess, the north of Rafa, about 100,000 of them via leaflet uh, that they need to go to Khan and Yunus. Tweet, and tweet. They can check the tweets. Yes. The tweets out there. So um, in our official tweet. Exactly. That's what they'll as they're, you know, as they're creating more mass graves, um, you know, they'll just have a, someone print out a tweet and lay it on top of the bodies. I mean, it's fucking sick. Um, they um, so, yeah, they're going to they're telling people to go to Khan Yunus, which, again, is basically rubble at this point. It doesn't nothing is the, it's tense at this point uh, and rubble. Um, but then. Even I think it was hours after leaflets were dropped, bombs started falling, uh, apartment buildings targeted. Uh, it's unclear like exactly how many I saw, like 11 um, apartment buildings targeted, children killed. But again, the, because of the lack of access to, you know, and the, and obviously the fact that Al Jazeera was just ruled illegal and like all <laughs> channels were cut into Israel, like we're not getting a lot of information. Um, but it's uh yeah it is incredibly upsetting yeah. and it's wild to me also back to the news media just how they're spinning this as like oh like yesterday the morning the mood was like yes hamas agreed because remember we were told hamas is the ones who've been holding out and it was the news media was like yay and look at these palestinians I celebrating think. do we have it guys and then israel was like we do not have it. And then now the media is like trying to figure out what like Hamas making Israel not accept the ceasefire, um, which they I mean, they have rejected this before um, they were uh, like originally prepared to release all the hostages um, at the very beginning of this. Um, yep. And that did not happen. Um, it's very clear that they don't want this to happen. Um, they could maybe recognize that the most hostages that have been saved were during the ceasefire and um, they killed hostages when there wasn't a ceasefire. Like it's, uh, it's very obvious what is possible and even probable and what they don't want to happen. Right. And it's amazing because you're seeing, I mean, what the position is this Hamas would like ceasefire, then hostage release. Israel would like hostage release, then ceasefire. Which is a little funny, considering that Israel is responsible. They're going to uh, shoot the hostages, literally like, ki killing its own hostages. If there's uh, no to say nothing, fire, they'll just shoot them. It's exactly absurd. to yeah. say nothing of the fact that they could have already and have already killed hostages vis-a-vis -vis the bombing, um, uh, like incessant bombing. Like, you know, you hear the hostages stories from hostages who have been released are like, um, or no, excuse me, hostages who have video of themselves released. And you can hear bombs in the background and their relatives are like, 
I'm worried that my family member will be killed by an Israeli bomb or an American made uh, Israeli bomb. And, you know, you saw like a, 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 a roadway like blocked by Israeli protesters, family members of the hostages, you know, shit that nobody wants to talk about. Oh, that's so inconvenient. Let's go back to talking about the students. Um, but it's just, exactly. you could have a, you could have any kind of exchange without a ceasefire. Um, and it's always, it's just, again, it's this sort of like, I don't want to overuse this term or use it incorrectly, but it's this sort of like weird gaslighting media thing where like, well, we've been saying this for months and months and months that this is actually the situation and every example of it being the situation, they're like, well, actually that's your, you're the far left and the right to get whatever it is they're going to say. Um, even pointing out like that there are things that Joe Biden and the American government can do to uh, slow this at, at the least slow it mm -hmm. um, earlier today. Uh, they said they're holding up some shipments of uh, precision bombs, um, which is like, yeah, exactly. That's a move you can do. And I just remember months and months and months of people being like, what do you expect Biden to do? He's just a little small, he's a little good guy. He can't do anything. Mm -hmm. um, something like this. And then, you're supposed to sort of be like tricked into thinking, oh, this is how it always should have been. The thing that we were saying could have been done months ago, they needed to wait six, seven months for tens of thousands of people to die before they could do this. And um, it's just like, what's the number? Like, what's the number that you want to get to before what you could have done months ago is on the table? Yeah. And it's just very frustrating to constantly see this back and forth and it be so obvious what's yeah. going on yeah i mean and it's also curious you know it's like it it you know i've seen people say that israel starting this invasion of rafa after this you know ship this like green lighting of you know 14 billion more dollars uh for israel but then you know yes there is some there's been some restrictions on the amount of weapons or the kinds of weapons but the question i have is like don't they already have enough like don't they actually have enough to do to like complete what they want to complete, which I believe is killing as many as people as possible, making refugees out of the rest. And I mean, it is a game. Well, and then bombing the refugee camp. Well, right? then bombing the refugee camp, if it's not where they want, right? If it's not, right. um, you know, they have like plans for the future, like the Sinai Desert is where they want the, the refugees to be, which is just like home to nothing. Um, they obviously they hate the UN, but if the UN could just take care of the refugees, I mean, we're going to bomb UN sites and, uh, mm, and obviously uh, UNRWA will, will bomb them and kill those aid workers. But once we've done what we want with Gaza, we're going to really need the UN to step up. Yeah, exactly. Cause we're not going to rebuild this shit. It's just, I mean, it's, it's, and then Cody today, lastly, Biden went, you know, speaking you know, in remembering, remembering the Holocaust, it's a Holocaust Remembrance Day, I believe, or if it might just be that he's using this as like, he's just talking about the Holocaust. Um, but he's basically like, I stand with Israel. And then he says, uh, even if we disagree, we must stand with Israel, which is such a green light to Netanyahu. It's basically like, okay, Stoppy, no good, but also I love you and support you in whatever you do. Like Wild. there is no red line for, for to Joe say Biden. that out loud too. Like obviously yeah. it's been frustrating to see like his like all the little palace intrigue, like Biden he's secretly, he's so upset about this. He can't, he's calling him an asshole behind closed doors. So clearly it's fine. But yeah, to say out loud uh with cameras, like, you know, even if you think it's bad. <laughs> Sorry, folks, it's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we'll, and we'll stand by them. And again, speaking on Holocaust Remembrance Day, which it is, or it was, and then conf it automatically conflates, and then saying we support Israel, it conflates Israel and the Jewish experience brought, I mean, I guess globally, or all Jews, um, or not all Jews, but you know what I'm saying, and <laughs> which is, I think, what progressive, if you can even call them progressive, Jews with a conscience in this moment like filmmaker Jonathan Glazer have been saying, please do not use the memory of the Holocaust to um, bastardize it, to justify the crimes that are being conducted by Israel right now.
What's going on, Frantifa? If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel right now. Hit that button. And also, you can become a patron and support the show every single week. Get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise. Patreon.com slash Bituation Room. Do it.